Hello, how are you doing? My name is Thomas Molyneux. So for like a really, really long time, I struggled to try and quit porn. Like I would just try and try and no matter what I did, somehow I'd always go back and have a setback. And it was so, so frustrating. Like I really did start to think, hmm, maybe there's something wrong with me. And I just felt so overwhelmed by shame and frustration with myself. It was a really, a really dark time. You know, there was a lot of good times as well. And like over those eight years, I made a lot of friends. I built some really good habits and I learned so much about myself. But during especially like the first sort of six or seven years of trying to quit, there was so much inner conflict. There was so much hatred towards myself as a person after every setback and there were so many like ups and downs because I'd feel really good and really confident and really alive and really energetic when I was on a really long streak and then it'd all come crashing down and I'd feel terrible again and it was just so exhausting to sort of be on these streaks and have these ups and then have these downs and I'm so so happy because all of that is in the past now, like for good, forever. I never have to have these extreme ups and downs ever again. I'm so like confident now. I just, yeah, like life is genuinely so good. I want to connect with people. I want to create. I'm so passionate about what I do and the life that I have. I'm so proud of the habits I've been able to build. And I just feel in control of myself. And I want this for you as well. I want this for everyone. Everyone who once felt like I, I felt when I was in that really dark, lonely place. So filled up with shame, thinking that there was something inherently wrong with me down to the core. I don't want anyone to feel like that again. So in this video, what I will be doing is sharing some of the very, very best things that have helped me get to this place now where I truly, truly believe that porn and all of those problems that I used to experience are genuinely in the past for the rest of my life. I am free from those problems now. And it's nothing really to do with me. That's the crazy thing about all of this. How I feel today, like this energy, is possible for every single person watching this. And I 100% believe that, 100%. And it's all about the process. It's 100% about the process, the systems, the routine, the strategy. It's all about that. It's nothing to do with who I am as a person fundamentally. It's nothing about who you are fundamentally as a person. This is really just about the systems that we build. And so that's why I know it's possible for you to get to this place that I am now, which is free from porn for good. So anyway, enough waffling on. I am really excited to share some interesting information with you. The first place I want to start is just by saying that like, the reason you haven't quit yet is because you haven't been taught how. So there's literally nothing wrong with you. There's just something wrong with your system. And the main thing you haven't been taught is how to regulate your emotions, especially when you're in that fight flight or freeze response when the amygdala has been activated and this is why all of the things out there online don't really work you know over my like seven or eight years trying to quit this problem i tried pretty much everything out there i tried cold showers working out like pretty extreme amounts intermittent fasting socializing a lot more like just seeing friends like all the time going on walks all the time. I tried journaling. I tried, you know, building some new hobbies, playing the guitar for a little while, very badly, playing football a lot, which I, I do anyway, cooking a lot more, like working towards more goals and building businesses. I tried, I tried so many things. I tried the easy peasy method. I read Atomic Habits. I read Your Brain on Porn two or three times. I was on an app where you got support and help from other people 
who were struggling with porn and had like loads of great rewiring exercises and all of those kind of things and tried therapy. You know, there were so many things I tried, but none of that really worked. It all helped. I read probably over about 40 or 50 books on self-development and I've learned so much through those books and it has transformed my mindset. But there was one thing which wouldn't, wouldn't really click into place. And that is that the amygdala, that's the part of the brain which is very primitive and would help us in dangerous situations in the past, that part of the brain would still get activated under certain situations, in certain contexts. And that's because I had what I've discovered is maybe childhood PTSD, some kind of childhood trauma. I don't know, like there's a lot of these words coated around what we experience when we're younger, but what happens is that due to implicit memory and you can get into internal family systems and learn about that as well and all kinds of different therapies out there. But what is basically happening is memories are getting lodged in that amygdala. So memories from when you're really young, they, they get activated again. And so suddenly you're not in control of yourself. That prefrontal cortex, the rational part of the brain is no longer in control and suddenly you're a seven-year-old again. And that seven-year-old has learned a coping mechanism that isn't very healthy. And so what we need to do is manage our emotions in a much healthier, proactive way. And there's a lot of ways to do that. So that's kind of why for me, nothing else really worked. What this has all, all ended up being about, at least in my opinion, is really emotional regulation. So we'll start off with a few tips on how to prevent ourselves even getting the sexual urges in the first place. And then I'll talk about how we can actually deal with this amygdala being activated as well. How do we actually deal with those sexual urges? So the first thing I would say is to identify what thinking patterns are not helping you. So in the past, I had so many thought processes which were really, really detrimental to me overcoming this problem. A few would be like, well, you know, my streak's over, so may as well look at more sexual content. There's a lot of conditional thinking going on, a lot of all or nothing thinking going on. And also I kind of had that identity a little bit that there was like something wrong with me or that I was like a porn addict, whatever that means. So yeah, just identifying what thinking patterns, what thought processes are actually unproductive. And once you've identified them, we can kind of create a bit of distance and start to be more aware of them if they creep up on us again in the future. We also want to consider what's actually leading to those cravings. And so my second tip would be to start to identify the physical environment where you get triggered. So is it laying in your bed? If it is, then the simple solution to that is only use your bed for sleep. And that's that, that's one problem solved. If it's in the bathroom, you're sitting on the toilet and you're scrolling your phone, you know, I used to do that. Well, just don't take your phone to the bathroom. It's very simple. So a lot of these things can be really effective and really, really simple. So what I'd recommend doing is writing down a list of the physical locations where you've looked at sexual content in the past and then decide for yourself, okay, what am I going to do in that physical location? As I say, the bed is for sleep, the toilet is for using the toilet. Now with like digital locations as well, there's a very similar sort of thing going on. Like people will pretend they're going on TikTok to, I don't know, watch football videos or something but really they're actually seeking out some sexual content. So you want to just be aware of the digital spaces where you look at sexual content and just choose like, what are you going to do in that space? James Clear talks about one space, one use, and I really like that. That's a concept within the Atomic Habits book that I've applied to like pretty much every area of my life. So this is all really just about identifying what physical and what digital locations you experience urges in. Once you've identified them, apply a one space, one use policy, both to the physical and digital, and this will really, really help you avoid getting triggered quite as much. So tip number three or four um, would be meditation. Like honestly, meditation is the sort of key that unlocks the door to success on this journey. It really, really does. I, I can't 
I can't put into words what meditation has done for me personally. I think I've done over 12,000 minutes now on Headspace and I actually meditate just as much, maybe even more independently as well. So it is just, it's just changed my mind completely. It's helped me create space and awareness. And I think most importantly, it's helped me become less judgmental of the world around me and myself. Instead, I'm so grounded in the present moment a lot of the time that I don't, I don't really think negatively. Um, I used to think very, very negatively towards myself and it caused me a lot of problems. It created a lot of urges. I often thought I was like a failure, like there was something wrong with me, like I wasn't good enough. And all of those thoughts now, I can see from a distance. If they do pop up into my consciousness, that's okay. I don't really mind because it is just a thought. It's temporary, it comes, it goes. Every urge, every thought, every feeling, everything is temporary. Every single thing is temporary. And that is the beautiful, amazing, unbelievable, life-changing realization. And that is what solves this problem. Is getting grounded, getting into the present moment and deeply, deeply understanding on an experiential level. And that's why you need to meditate that everything is temporary. Because when you understand this, when you have an urge, you can go, okay, I'm having an urge. And you become aware of that urge. So how does it feel? Where is the urge? And you start to sort of explore it a little bit. Ask yourself a few questions. And you can kind of do that from a bit of a distance. You sort of realize, okay, well, this is going on for me here. It feels like this. I don't really like it, but okay. You know, it's, it's here. And you can actually accept it, not to resist it, not use willpower. And then you just return your attention back to whatever it is you were supposed to be focusing on, focusing on, and you just crack on with your day. You got this. You got this completely. You're fine. You're set. And it's as simple as that. So yeah, meditation, a wonderful thing, an amazing thing. And how do we do meditation? Because I guess what I've said so far is just like, oh yeah, so amazing. But you're probably thinking, well, how do I actually do that? That's a fair question. So I sit down and I just try and focus on my breath. So I'll usually close my eyes and I'm really just focusing on the breath going in, the breath going out. So I really recommend the app Headspace. I think that's awesome, but there are also guided meditations pretty much everywhere on the internet. What I would do is just try and find something that works for you and bring absolutely no judgment to your meditation practice. That is absolutely essential because so many people get put off doing meditation because they think it's like a skill they have to master, like it's something where they're either good at it or bad at it, but that's just absolutely not true. It really is just like going to the gym. It's not something that you get right straight away. You don't see results straight away. It's just about the habit. It's about the system of doing it and making it a regular practice where you have consistency and over time yeah you will probably get better at it but there will be days where you're really good at like focusing on your breath and there'll be days when you're not good at focusing on your breath and so in my opinion you can't really be good or bad at it in fact what you're doing is you're just heightening your awareness of how you are doing each given day so i wake up i do my meditation practice and that really gives me a good indicator of where my brain is at. Some days it's really busy, some days it's more quiet. Some days I wanna get outside and start working straight away. Other days I really feel like some rest. And so it just helps me get to know myself a lot, lot better. And then as I was saying a lot earlier in this video, I've experienced certain things when I was younger which were quite difficult. And what meditation does for me is it helps me stay grounded and present in the moment and sort of deal with some really uncomfortable feelings. Like certain thoughts do come up in my meditation sometimes. Thoughts like, like, like this is hard to talk about, but thoughts like, you know, what if your mum dies soon? Because my mum has terminal cancer. That's a reality in my life. So that thought might come up, might trigger all these emotions and negative feelings and horrible, horrible experiences but through my meditation practice I stay sitting down in my seat 
I return my attention to my breath as best as I possibly can. And through doing that, I learn that I don't need to escape negative emotions because actually that anxiety or that stress or that loneliness or that fear or that powerlessness, none of those emotions can actually dictate my actions. I am the one always in control, not my emotions. My emotions are going to come. I am going to experience sexual urges from time to time, but they do not necessarily lead to the actions that I decide to take. My choices and my emotions are two completely separate things and that is what meditation really helps me learn on a deep, really experiential level. And hopefully that's what can help you overcome your urges as well. So in this video, I haven't talked too much at length around like the issues that I faced in life and sort of the loneliness or the anxiety or all of those negative emotions. There is more on that in my online course and I'd love for you to have a free consultation as well. So check out the link in the description if you would like to have a chat with me and learn more about my course and also just get some free help. And yeah, I really do hope this video has helped you and I'll see you in the next video.